Um, so this webinar, is, is we're probably going to take an hour because the technique we're going to show you is really simple. Now, I know we normally say we'll take an hour and then we take 90 minutes, but this is incredibly simple, real simple. What we're talking about is a way of getting free content and free ranking in the search engines with no work and no writer's fees. I know you're going to say, really, really, really? Yep, yeah, we're going to show you. We're going to prove it to you. And you know that everybody wants more traffic. Content is the way to get it. You've all heard that phrase. I know you're all sick of it, but it's true. Content is king. So if you find a source of free quality content and you publish one blog post with no writing of your own, do you think it would be reasonable if you got nearly 35,000 visitors to that one single blog post? I do. Um, now, that that's a lot of visitors. Okay, a lot of visitors. So let me just show you. This is from Josh's uh, page, one of his pages. And a page that he's taken content from somewhere else, which we'll show you in a moment, got nearly 35,000 visitors. And in fact, just in the first 30 days, when he first tried this, he got two and a half thousand visitors. So it's built up a little bit over time, as you can imagine, but 35,000 visitors. And for the rest of your site, Josh, which is a 14 year old website with a ton of articles, which is the top visited blog post? Sorry, Amy, can you repeat that? Yeah, so on your site, which is 14 years old and it has a ton of content on there, which page is the one that's most visited right now? Yeah, it's the page that we're referring to here. It's a yeah. page from Wikipedia uh, on Germany mountains, mountains in Germany. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, I've got a question here which we'll answer in a moment, but um, I'm not sure. Nedra, we'll, we'll come back to that for you. So uh, let me show you something else that's really odd but cool, right? The page that Josh created with absolutely 100% duplicate content that he took from elsewhere legally, I emphasize that point, it is legal, is now referenced in Wikipedia itself as a source of information. And something else incredible happened, and I know you've probably seen it in the email, but Josh, you've had contact from people who've accessed this page, college students, and, and they've, thanked you for what? They've said something about what they've used the information for. What did they use it yeah. for? Well, it's it's totally authority content. It's about as authority as it gets, and they've used it for research. I, th I think there's two different people, separate people who, who had, and they used it for research for uh, college-level papers. So uh, it, it's just it just goes to show you value of the content I mean it's it's a no-brainer we all know that it's valuable content but just to see from this content that I you know just copied over onto my website it's pretty awesome yeah and we, we do emphasize that it's legal and this is this is all cool isn't it right and I know people are going to be saying well show me then we've promised to show you how to do this manually we're going to do that right now so what I hey, need Eamon. to do is just change yeah go ahead yeah, before you move on, I just wanted to hit on what you just showed, <clears throat> that yeah. reference in Wikipedia. <laughs> I thought that was awesome, you, you know, because I emailed you and John, <laughs> and I was pretty enthusiastic about it. Uh, <clears throat> the reason that's so cool is because I copied the content <laughs> for my page from Wikipedia. Well, yeah. it's published to my website. <clears throat> uh, over time, the uniqueness of it uh, goes higher and higher because the page – is modified on Wikipedia. So over time, my page becomes the authority. So now people are copying from my page. We're going to talk about that later. But now my page is the authority. Now my page, which contains content that came from Wikipedia, is now linked to as an authority on Wikipedia on another Wikipedia page. Just think about that for a minute. That's pretty awesome. That's just cool. Well, if you think about just the link on its own in terms of ranking, how fantastic is that? But there's all kinds of other things you can do as well, which we want to talk about. And believe me, there is a great deal to talk about. So uh, I've just hidden the question. So just bear with me one second. So what I'm going to show you is essentially the technique you will use for publishing this kind of content. So you're going to go to Wikipedia uh, and I'm doing a I'm looking at skincare, OK, because I've got a demo site here for skincare. Uh, this one number. Right. So I'm going to show you some posting to uh, a demo site. Now, when you look at the category, in fact, let me just go back a bit. Um, when you look at the 
first page of Wikipedia, you're going to narrow down for the categories and so on. And then you'll find a whole ton of um, articles that you can use. Each of those will point to another article. So you could end up with like 10, 20, 30 articles, all related to a particular niche. So I was looking at skin care and then I looked at itchy skin and things like that. I was just reading, uh, you know, randomly reading to see what I could show as an example. Skin care is one of those things where you can promote affiliate products whether it's Amazon or specific mer merchants and so on. If you can give good information about treating your skin um, for breakouts or whatever, then people will come to you for that information and they may take your recommendation on what to buy. So this is an authoritative article about calamine. Um, calamine lotion, I think some people call it calamine. And you can see here, each of these links is gonna go to another article which basically allows you to build out a whole bunch of articles that have good authoritative content. So I'm just going to scroll down and copy, as you can see, that's all I'm doing. And then copy, and then I'm going to go to my blog post, add a new post. And you can see this is dead simple. We've all added posts in the past, right? Put a title. Now, the title can be whatever you want. It can just be whatever's on the main article, or you can add a little bit more if you want. And then I'm going to paste in the document. Dead simple, right? I mean, look at that. That's real simple. So I'm going to publish that, and then I'm going to let you see the article, and you can see what it looks like. So this is the article that I've just published. Really simple, OK? A nice, long article, lots of good information. Article 1. Now. I may want to have a look at this article about itchiness. Okay, let me just get rid of that for a moment. So this tells you what it is. It tells you the medical term pruritus or pruritus. I'm not sure how you say that. You can also see there are more links within it to other articles. So hopefully by now you can see that within uh, you know, a single article, you could probably end up with an entire website related to a very specific niche. So I would do the same again. I would uh, scroll down. And you see there's an image there, by the way, as well. So we could take the image. Yeah, and that would take um, time to get on. that, download that yeah, image, right upload in. it. So format. this is a long article, this one. So look at this. So now I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back to another. And you'll see the same thing over and over, right? So let me just go back, add a new one. And this one was called itching. So, you know, that's fine. It's related to the topic. I could, if I wanted, take half a second and make the title a little bit bigger. Publish, publish, and let's have a look. I've got a couple of nice articles, and I can interlink them if I want. I can go back and do that hundreds of times. And I can go and have a look at these images as an image. Um, I can download, add it to my blog, and so on. I'm not going to do that, because essentially, if any of you has a blog, you'll know about adding content to your blog. So I've done two articles in a couple of minutes, pretty fast. OK, but I can't do 20 articles in two minutes. And you didn't I do the images do, either. And yeah. the image as well. That's right. That would take longer. So essentially, the technique is as simple as I've just shown you. You go onto Wikipedia. You do a search. Uh, I've done skin care. What else would we do? Um, weight loss, maybe. That's always popular, isn't it? Um, and you can see we've got, again, all kinds of information here on top of the page itself, everything where we've got a link, physical fitness, body mass, that would certainly be relevant to weight loss, adipose tissue. In other words, you can build out a really well-rounded site with lots of information that's related. And related information is great for getting rankings in the search engines because that's what they're looking for. If you have a rich content base and it's all related to your niche and the sub-niches within it, then you're providing information that is useful <laughs> I've just seen some comments. Um, uh, it's useful information to site visitors. And then people are saying, just shut up talking, give me the link. <laughs> it's a no brainer. Um, OK, so essentially, that is the technique start to finish. You go to Wikipedia, find articles in your niche. And by the way, if I go back to the home page, um, let me just do it this way. And I'm still getting used to this particular. I've got a new keyboard, but it's a bit uh, different to the one I'm used to. 
Well, Eamon, while you're doing that, uh, yeah. let me just quickly, uh, that, that is the, that's exactly what I did to get the results that we provided. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, did you provide the, the traffic figure that we? Uh, yeah, uh, we yes, did. I did. I showed, showed that yeah. earlier. Um, the other but thing I wanted want, to show, go, well, sorry, if you, go ahead. Just quickly, real quick, uh, if you wanted to uh, do even more than what I did and something that if I would have done, I probably would have got multiple times the results is to make the content unique from the beginning. So we've talked about uh, the content becomes more unique over time as the Wikipedia page, the original source has changed and modified and regrouped, uh, but that takes time. So if you want to multiply the speed at which you, you have you know, top rankings and things, you would need to spin the content to use a spinner and go through or go through and modify it all manually. So that's another thing that would be very time consuming. Well, let me show you manually because that's really simple, but it's time consuming. Sometimes things that are easy to do take time. So look, I can make this particular paragraph real unique just by typing in a couple of words. Some side effects include skin irritation. It is usually thought to be safe in pregnancy. How about during pregnancy? That is now unique, that, that first sentence. I could go on with the rest of it, but it's taking me time, okay? So if you're gonna do that, you gotta put the time in, and that limits how many of these you can do. Now, 34,474 site visitors Josh got on a single page. Imagine if you had 100 pages. Now, um, I just want to show Josh's site for a moment, because site traffic is great, but if you have no monetization, the site traffic is worthless. Well, have a look at Josh's site, okay? So if I just go back to the main page here, ton of articles, right? You can see there's a long list of articles on the side there. Let's have a look at this, right? Now, I've actually got, um, if you look at this site yourself, you will see AdSense and other adverts on there. I have ad blockers on my, my uh, Mac, so I, I'm not seeing them, but most people would see the advertising there, which is a revenue generation. And if you think about 35,000 people visiting a page of information they're related, uh, interested in, and Google is giving them adverts that are related to what they are interested in, answer this question. How much more likely are they to click on an advert when they are already interested in that topic, much more likely, right? So you increase your chance of that click through, which gives you revenue. So by having uh, topics that appeal to people and AdSense, which then shows appealing information to them on the same topic, you're getting a match between desire and interaction. And so this is another reason why it's particularly useful. So one other thing about Wikipedia is that you can get articles in different languages. So if you happen to be a native uh, Spanish speaker or Italian, Portuguese, um, German, French, and so on, Polish, whatever, uh, you can get an article in these languages as well. And again, you would just do the same. So welcome to uh, Wikipedia, and then just click through to various you know, articles, do a search with the specific keyword in that language. So there's a whole wealth of articles here um, just in English, uh, what's that, six million articles? It's a lot of articles. Uh, you're not going to run out of content tomorrow, put it that way. Okay. So I've shown you the technique. Anybody think that's difficult? It's time consuming, let's be honest, but you know, it's not difficult. It's just looking, copying and pasting. So that's step one. Okay. Now I just want to go back to the... Um, keynote here. So I've shown you how, right? I've shown you how to do it. We've had a look at doing it manually, but what we really want to do is make it easier for you. So we're going to take a look now at what we call Wikicloner. And this is incredible. It really is. So this is Wikicloner. So you have effectively a project-based um, setting where you can keep things according to niche or clients if you're doing for that or particular blog sites you can keep things nice and neat within each project you can then uh, do jobs for different keywords so i've got some examples here so i'm going to show you uh, i'll do street photography first of all so the job in here i've only but done one job but i've got 324 possible articles that's a lot of articles let's have a look at them now by the way this is not meant to be a tutorial on how to use this because we do have a full help video just up here where it says help. 
but I just want to show you how simple it is to publish. It took me a couple of minutes to do two articles and I didn't do the images. Let's see how long it will take me to do a whole bunch of uh, articles using Wikicloner. I've selected them, I'm gonna publish them. I'll say yes. Now, that was only the first page, which is 10. I'm gonna choose uh, my demo blog and I'm gonna choose the general category now, your categories will be different, so they will show up when you connect your blog. And I'm going to say post an article every three days. And let's start on the 15th of December. Just think about that for a second. Ten articles so far I've listed. One every three days. That's going to take me a full month of posting. So over the next month, my blog will keep appearing to have new content that I've put on there on that day. Once I've hit this and it's finished, I don't have to do anything else. Does that make sense to everybody? Because it will actually do the timing and the schedule for me on my blog automatically. I can leave it. So let me just hit the schedule post and you see what I mean. So let's have a look. It's all doing the work here, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think there's a problem with that one. I looked at that article earlier, so the image has a problem. But if there is an image, it will post it for you. Now, I can go off and do something else while this is working. Um, and I'm going to get the um, articles up to show you in a moment. So I'm doing this to a single blog. I want to show you something else in a moment that's really quite interesting because the power of this tool is incredible, even though it's extremely simple. It doesn't really take much thinking about. You add your blog details, log in and so on. You then do a search for the keywords you're interested in. You get some articles, you choose the ones you like, post them to your blog, you're done, okay? So these articles now are on my, which blog did I do? Demo blog, I think it was this one. So it if I- an issue with your blog yeah. there. I don't, I've never seen that error, so. No, it's an image. So now oh, look, okay. I've, got, I've got the articles here, scheduled for me. Zach, I don't know how to say that name. Um, 15th of December it starts, then the 18th, the 21st, the 24th, 27th. This is taking me to the 11th of January. I don't have to touch that blog again. But let me show you something else. That's cool. That's, That's cool. It is. It's really cool. I mean, you, you could oh, 20 can, let, let me do this, like, Josh. Let me show you something even cooler. Yeah. I want to show this because, look, let's say I have multiple blogs. I'm selecting those 10 articles again. Keep, uh, do publish selected. Say yes. I'm going to choose my second blog. And I've only got a, a one category on that, by the way. And I'm going to have this every five days apart, starting, and I will start on the 1st of January. Schedule the posts. This is now posting to a second blog with a couple of clicks. Now, imagine how many blogs you can post content to with a couple of clicks. Of course, you can do different um, articles to each blog, but you may want, there, there may be some that you like that you want to put on multiple blogs. Remember that duplicate content in and of itself is not a problem. It's not against Google's terms and conditions. It's not gonna get you you know, delisted or whatever. If you cheat the system with um, spammy links and so on to a ton of duplicate content, that's a problem. Uh, so your linking needs to be careful, but we're gonna talk about linking in a moment anyway. But I've now, I've now populated two blogs, and this is blog two, isn't it? Uh, which was demo blog two, I can't remember. Oh, I think that's my real blog. I've done it to the wrong blog. Never mind. Um, but anyway, you can see that it's uh, it's actually, it's posted 20 articles in the same two minutes I took to do the original two. But let's go further. And I, after this, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna move on. Go ahead, yeah. Yes, I'm, sure, I'm sure people are wondering why there's a, a big error there. Uh, Honestly, I don't. I've done a lot of testing. I've never had a single error, so I don't know what that might be. Is that no? That's that particular idea? that particular article on Wikipedia. It's a problem with the oh. Wikipedia article. It's not the system. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I checked you. that article earlier. Yeah. So this is now page two. You can see I've got 33 pages of results, can't you? So let's just do the next 10 articles and publish those. And I think you're getting the idea now how easy this is. So I'm going to do look. I know street photography on a skincare blog sounds a bit odd, but you know, it's just for demo, okay? And I'm gonna have these every day, starting today, so they'll be a, a day apart. 
Okay, so it's posting, 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 and so on. That's now 30 articles in less than three minutes. If any of you can do it that fast, that's great. But I haven't even shown you the cool bit yet because we're going to talk about making the content more unique in a moment. So I'll let this finish, then I'm going to show you that. So this was blog uh, demo skincare, which was, which one was that one? This one. So if I show you the skincare blog, can you see now that we have these new articles? By the way, these are famous street photographers, these people. And you can see they're starting, they're a day apart, 12th of December, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and so on. I could actually populate a dozen blogs with a year's worth of content in an hour. Now, if each of those pages, so I could have uh, 300 pages on each of them if I wanted, if each of those pages only got a thousand visitors over the next year and you've got 300 pages, that's a lot of visitors, right? If you get as many as Josh did on his example page, it's a really massive number of people. But then think about linking back to your blogs, which will give you rankings. Josh has got a link from Wikipedia to a page on his website that's bound to affect him in the rankings and make that page and higher. Go ahead. Yeah, and Eamon, that, that's not it. I actually didn't mention the others. There's a whole lot of other links that have come from that. Tons of other others, actually. We, we have yeah. a lot of comments. People are really blown away by this. Just the last two comments, wow. And then another one says, OMG. Uh, people see the value in this. And, and we're about to get into making it more unique, which is, which is really exciting, which yeah. is more than what I did for mine. I'm just showing one here with uh, an image in the attribution and so on. So this is one that's got an image, which is quite nice. Cool so far, but let's show you some other things we can do. Let's go back to the project. Now, I'm going to go to the last page simply because of the way this works. I want you to see what actually happens. And this last page has a few articles on it. Well, Ad Adrian Bradshaw, I want to spin this. So whatever that article is, and I can look at it here with the pencil icon, by the way. That's his article. And if I wanted to, I could change it here. I'm going to spin it with one click. I've just got to go back to page 33. Just bear with me. So this hey, article, Amy. I want to, yeah, oh. go ahead. No, you go ahead, sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll hear I want to spin this automatically. So this art, um, little icon here will give me a spun article. That's done. That's already spun, by the way. Okay, I just have to go back to the last page. Um, and now, okay, can you see here? I've got the original and I've got the spun version. And if I want to tweak it and just make it a little bit better, I can come in here, edit it. Um, let's have a look. I would probably want a bit of space. You know, that's too too dense for me. Uh, that kind of text I don't like. I like a bit of space with text. That's a personal thing, by the way. Update the article. So I've now saved that spun version of the original article. I'm going to post it to a blog. I can post to... A, an in individual blog, a single article or a whole bunch of them. So let's say I'll do it on the insurance blog just for fun, okay? And because I'm now posting this and it's a single um, article, I'm going to publish it now rather than put it on a schedule. So if you're just doing a single one that you want to appear immediately, that's fine. So let's have a look at this one. Um, we'll just go, it was the, which blog was it? It was the insurance one, wasn't it? Adrian Bradshaw, let's just have a look. So there we've got a spun version of the original article. Now, of course, as I said, if I wanted to, I could actually um, edit that article before I post it, or I can just use the original spun version. That's entirely up to you. I can also download the articles for safekeeping. So that's downloading the text. I can download the spun version. So far, so good, but let me show you one other thing. I'm going to do a quick project just to show you, and this is a demo. And remember, you can have pretty much as a demo in different language. You can have as many of these as you want for the purpose of uh, organizing your own work. So to create a job, we're going to choose new job, and I'm going to choose um, German. Let me think. Um, what would be a good one for Germany? Can you think of something, Josh? I'm trying to think of a phrase. I can think of the German, but I'm, I can translate uh, it. I'm trying to think. What would... uh, German, Germany tourism, Germany travel, Germany tours, trips. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Freiheit in Deutschland. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to put this oh, in quotes. I want... okay. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I'm looking for German language now. Right, I got So you. I've got a job looking for German articles in the German language. Now, I don't know if that's going to bring anything up. It might do, it might not. Because I've chosen to do it with quotes, it's looking for that exact phrase. Um, but we can div choose a different one later if it doesn't bring anything. But I can now have multiple language blogs as quick and as easy as that. Now, bear in mind that Josh simply copied the article. He did not actually uh, edit it. And he's getting a ton of visitors. And he's getting rankings and authority, which doesn't just go to the page. It spreads to his blog as well. How just about that? Just think about that, that for is, a minute. You, you can incredible. literally, yeah, you can literally fill blogs full of unique, uh, authoritative content with the click of a button. <laughs> 20, 30, 40 posts immediately, or schedule yeah. them, drip feed. Probably smarter to drip feed them, but just the idea of publishing that much yeah. unique content is just awesome. And also, um, I think because of this. Um, uh, the, the way I phrased that, probably not finding anything. Also, the spinner part of this, let me just go back to the projects and leave that running for a moment. The spinner part of this is built in. You don't need the separate best spinner. So yeah, if you have an article of, here, a yeah, lot of people, lot of people asking, asking about that. Yeah. Yeah. How easy is it to set up the blogs and so on? Well, um, when you go to the blog section here, I, I don't want to go to that because you'll see my details. When you go to the blog sections here, you put in your blog name to remind you which blog it is. If you've got more than one, you put in the blog URL, your username, your password, you hit save, it's set up. It takes a few seconds. And we do have the help video here to show you. So it's it's very straightforward, really, to do those settings. Now, uh, what we've got is the ability here to segregate into niches or topics or, or you know, you can do it by blog. Um, I'm doing it here just as an example. but this project could just as easily be um, weight loss blog number one, and you can put multiple jobs in there. I've only got one job in there at the moment, but I can add a new job to that specific project. And that means I can make this as easy or as complex as I want for the kind of real estate I have. If you've got a single blog or two or three, you probably don't need to do a ton of um, different projects and so on. But it pays to think about it in advance because it's so easy to get the content out there you may find you start making blogs just to use this. Now, Josh mentioned there it's probably a good idea, um, I would say, to to um, uh, sort of queue your posts so they drip out over time. Right? Let me just show 100 entries here. So I've got 100 entries, right? So I'm going to select them all. 100 entries. Two entries took me two minutes without uh, uh, images before, didn't they? So this should take me 100 minutes plus yeah is that fair for posting this so i can spin them all with one click how how powerful is that and i can publish them all so i'm going to publish 100 articles man that's um, awesome uh, 100 <laughs> unique long in-depth expert articles published to your site instantly that is and just i'm going awesome. to start it from tomorrow Every two days, so that means that would take 200 days before I've run out of new material. So every two days with these settings, Google and everybody else would see new content on my site. Now, in case anybody doesn't know how that works, it's telling your WordPress blog to put the time for when this should go live to today, then tomorrow, or the next day, or whatever time I've set there. And when visitors go to your website, your blog will actually check, do we have any new uh, articles that are supposed to be shown today? And if it is meant to be shown today, that will then appear automatically. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to log back in. It will do it for you when you get a site visitor. So you can actually set up literally an entire year. I think there were 323 articles here. If I wanted to have them all on a single blog, that is a full year one new article a day now the other thing is they're all related so it's very much on topic but i can round out the blog because this is about street photographers and so on i could also talk about by doing a search um, job about equipment for street photography i could do um, techniques for street photography i could do fine art photography and so on so i can round out the blog for people who have interest 
um, in slightly sub niches of the main niche. So let's just have a look. Um, how do you monetize this? Okay, oh look, good question. How do you monetize this? Well, we use uh, AdSense, but you can use affiliate links in here if you want to. Eamon, um, so I, I want to yeah. interject yeah. there. I, I'm not 100% yeah. sure uh, if, uh, I know that I've had AdSense on my site the whole time. I'm oh yeah, that's a good point. Sure let me, yeah, let me explain for them. Yeah, if, so, if you have an AdSense account and all you have uh, is articles from Wikipedia and you apply for that AdSense account, they're probably not going to approve you. If you have an existing website with some content on of your own, then uh, yeah, you'd be able to use AdSense. It, it, there is a, a point at which you need some content of your own, but bear in mind you can promote affiliate products. This example here, this is street photography. So the only people who are going to look at this kind of thing are people who are interested in street photography and street photographers and techniques and so on. Amazon have absolutely dozens and dozens of books on this, which I could promote as an affiliate. There are individual courses that people have. There's Udemy, there's Skillshare and things like that, Masterclass. Um, you, you can, anything where you can get an affiliate link, you can put onto your blog, uh, you can put in the sidebar or wherever you would normally put your monetization. Now, I'm saying you can do 300 and odd articles, right? I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying that this is how easy it is. You may decide to put 10 articles on one website and then 10 on a different website and then mix and match with your own content. So the, the way you use this is as flexible as you wish it to be. You do not have to just take every single article from here and dump it on your own blog. There's tremendous power in mixing and matching. And bear in mind, I'm just showing you a very simple uh, specific niche here, but you could expand it slightly or you can drill down into it whichever way uh, suits you best. So this is a very specific thing, street photography. We could talk about for portrait photography as well. Now over time, as these articles get edited, the ones that stay on my blog are going to end up more unique or more nearly unique so that you get um, an automatic distinction from the Wikipedia article itself, as Josh was mentioning earlier. So um, you can see that there's a couple of them where there's a problem with the image on Wikipedia, but um, this is, it's done about what, 40 of them now? 40, I can go away and do something else. And I've forgotten which blog I did it to. What did I do it to? The demo skincare was number two. So you can see Tom Wood was the last one. That's 20th of December. Let's just have a look, refresh the page. How many more are on there now? I'm, I'm scheduled up to 22nd of April, 2020 so far. And it hasn't finished yet. There's a few more to go. So I can leave that alone for a long time to come. So we've got some questions about which niches it works for. Um, essentially, anything where you can find content on Wikipedia that matches, Glenn, whatever you, you happen, your niche happens to be. Um, Frankie, let's have a look. This will be great for niche testing. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, if you wanted to see if there's any sort of traction. Yeah, um, that's right. Several, now, Eamon, several people have asked about the legality of it. Is it legal? Is it yes. copyright? Is it copyright, et cetera? Uh, do you want to answer that? I know it's, I can tell you, it's Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License. Yeah. We, we actually look at, we use the official Wikipedia API and we checked the terms and conditions before we did this uh, and you are allowed to share this. The images do require um, attribution sometimes, so we put that in. You can turn it off if you want to, but we suggest you leave it on. Um, but the articles are free to share. There is a caveat. You have to be willing to have your article shared freely as well. But since most blogs that can happen, you know, simply can come to your blog and simply copy and paste, not a problem. So uh, yes, we, we've checked the terms and conditions. You can do it and, you know, people are doing it all the time and it's perfectly okay to do. Now, the, the more important thing is you've got content, that's great. You start to get some visitors. What else can you do with that content? Now, that, that's an important question because if you don't already have a website that gets visitors, um, good content on there may take a while to find, okay? You're not suddenly gonna get thousands of visitors in day one. You notice that it took Josh 30 days to get two and a half thousand visitors the first 30 days, and then it's built since then. 
but his website was an existing website with some content anyway. There is a way that you can actually um, promote this and it is an upsell to the main products. So we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes when we talk about the, uh, the actual pricing and so on, which we'll get to shortly. But at this point, what I would like to ask is, are there any questions that people have? Because we do have, you know, we've covered the entire thing. I've shown you how to do this. Uh, has it finished? Let me just have a look. Because we did 100 articles. Yes, yeah, we finished all of them. There so are a whole watch. lot of a lot of questions and a, lo a whole lot of positive feedback. Uh, so we were at 22nd of April. Let me just refresh the page and see where we're at now. 27th of June next year. And there's another couple of articles to go on. So... Um, bear in mind, all I'm doing is showing you this as a simple posting system. You can, if you wish, go in and edit the content, add some comments about it. You can do content curation. I would personally do content curation to add my personal voice so that people get a f the, what we call the flavor of me. And when they come to my website, I can comment. Well, let me show you exactly what I mean. So uh, let's find... Somebody, um, yeah, this one. Uh, just randomly, I'm going to show you what I would do. I'd actually look at this article, and then I would comment about it. So I would start with a unique paragraph here in this article. And then, then you know, you can put whatever you like, which came from Wikipedia. I would, uh, well, I can't type, but you know, I'm trying to type and talk. It's difficult with most of the points. Keep reading for where I <laughs> disagree. I'm not going to get anything for spelling tonight, am I? But you can see. Um, so that's a unique paragraph. And then I could talk here. Um, for me, I would not place myself. Oh, look at this can't type at all in danger ever so this particular comment you see relates to the point here about photojournalists being in danger and I might do something as simple as make it uh, bold it doesn't take long you could spend 30 or 40 seconds on an article and modify it to give it your own flavor now just think about that you've got 300 articles that's a lot of seconds isn't it no it isn't because you can do one a day and if you had to do this article from scratch, I defy anybody on this call to do that article with that much wording and that much in-depth research in 30 or 40 seconds. What I'm saying to you is you can make this article even more unique and full of you, your personality, in under a minute just by having a quick flick through. You don't even have to read the entire article. Just stop at a random paragraph and talk about it. Uh, here's one. So we're um, 140 years on. Yeah. Let me just put, wow, right now, that is 140 years ago. Time really has marched on. Now, I would, you know, I personally would do something like make it bold so it stands out as my comment. You could make it um, block quotes. You could make it italics. But it literally a couple of seconds, right? I'm not reading the entire article. There's a name that caught my eye. I happen to know this particular guy. Uh, well, his work anyway. Henri Cartier-Bresson was a very, very famous photographer. Um, he was also known for something that he called the decisive moment. You see, I'm interested in this topic, so I can talk about it. If it's a topic you don't know about, you may have to do a little bit more work. But essentially, you can put, you can inject your personality into a 2,000-word article just by sprinkling through a few comments on paragraphs that you've read at random. You do not have to spend hours slaving over the typewriter, as it were, you know, um, to, to make it better than it is already. And, and that means you're giving more value to the people who come to your website. Josh, have you seen any questions uh, while I'm waiting for this? There, right there are tons, tons of, of questions and comments where there's no way we're going to be able to get through all no. of them. Um, let me let me look through here. Oh, I like this one. Does it help with ranking to add a few small comments here and there? Um, <clears throat> within this article, Peter, I would add rank, uh, comments for one main reason, and then there's other reasons as well. But the main reason is 
if I get traffic to my website, I'm getting a real person. And if I can make that real person like my site, I'm more likely to get them to, uh, well, share on Facebook or Pinterest. I'm more likely to get them reading another page. I'm more likely to get them trusting me well enough to click one of my affiliate links. So that's the first reason I would do it. The second reason is, uh, if you're putting some content at the top, bottom, and a couple of bits in the middle in the article, you are making it unique. And, and Google will actually pass or read an entire article, and they can see where the differences are. So that helps that way as well. It can help with ranking. Does it guarantee? No, of course not, but it can help. And bear in mind that at the end of the day, search engine rankings, are they, they exist for you for one reason, to get a real life human being onto your website. Let's never forget the end result is an actual person. If you make that person annoyed with a ton of junk, they're going to go away. You're not getting them back. If you keep them happy with good content that they're interested in, they might come back, they might click, they might recommend, and so on. Uh, so there's there's good reasons for making sure you add some of yourself in there um, if you ever want to promote a product yourself. Let me give you an, a concrete example. With this, where I've got street photography, uh, that's one of the things I like doing on my time off. I like taking uh, street photography uh, pictures and so on. If I were to make a, a book with my images from 2019, I could sell that book on my website. If I'm engaging people who arrive at the website, some of them would want to buy it. Now, people on YouTube are doing this all the time. It, it, it's definitely something you can do, but only once you've got people to like you and trust you. And some of them will like the way you write. Some of them will hate it. You can't tell which is which. So you've got to be true to yourself, I would say. I would recommend that very strongly to everybody and sprinkle in bits of yourself in the articles, your personality, your quirks or whatever it may be that makes you you, because certain people will be attracted to that, more likely to come back. And if you do make in this example a photo book, some of them will buy it. Not all of them, of course. If you make a course about how to avoid um, lack of confidence in street photography. I can tell you right now, as it happens, that particular topic, tons of people make money on that because so many people have that fear when they want to take street photographs. It's a bit like courses for being confident in public speaking. There are tons of them because so many people are not confident, right? There's room for another in there. There's room for you. Uh, and so if your topic lends itself to that kind of thing, teaching or um, you know, an ebook or that kind of thing, then adding your personality into the article. But, you know, if you spend a minute a day or two minutes a day, by the end of next year, those 365 articles are all going to scream Peter, Eamon, Josh, Glenn, you know, Joe, Linda, Guy, Mandy, Bruce, Jacques, Frankie. It's going to scream you. It's going to be branded with you. And in branding yourself like that, you can build an audience. So hopefully that answers your question, Peter. But uh, there's lots of reasons to do it, as you can see. So I have a bunch of other questions here. Just let me know when you're ready, Eamon. Oh, Mandy, I've got to read this just before you do. <laughs> Mandy has just, um, while we've been talking, has just scheduled 10 articles to one of her blogs and, and, and then amended them. And then the final comment is, this is just too easy. That is exactly right. It is just too easy. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of people saying it's a no-brainer. I've, I've purchased it dead simple and so on. Okay, let's, uh, any other questions we need to look at? Yeah, quickly, let me just hit on a few. Uh, <clears throat> several people have asked about asked about the categories. There's some confusion there. Uh, yes. The, the uh, wiki cloner pulls the categories from your blog. You're going to add your blog very quick and easy. Just add your username and password URL. Then it's configured in WikiCloner. Uh, whenever you go to post content, it's going to pull the categories that you've already set up in your blog. So it's real quick, really, really easy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in my Linda, example here for this blog, I've got a ton of categories. Yours will be different. Whatever category you have on the blog you add into WikiCloner, it will show you your categories. So when you set up your blog, usually you set up a couple of categories. Those will show in WikiCloner after you've added your login details. So don't worry about that. It's it's automatic. You don't have to type them in or anything like that. So whatever you have in your blog, it will just appear for you. Yeah, and Sorry, then go ahead. Linda, what you 
Yep. Linda asked, uh, how can we select the spun article and not the original when scheduling? Uh, whether you're scheduling or directly posting, it shows you, WikiCloner uh, shows you which is the spun and which is the original. So you post whichever you see one. in the type here. Um, I'm not sure, actually. I've never tried this. So if you type in the search box spun, any that you have that is spun will appear here. So I've only got two because I've just done uh, two demonstration ones. But uh, if I'd done 20, there would be 20 spun ones there. So I can choose these two and then publish them. Say yes. Choose a blog. Um, I'll do the skincare again. It's just, you know, an example. And schedule. And that's now publishing the spun versions for me. So you can do it very easily. Right, very easily. So essentially, all you're going to do with any of these is decide, do I publish the original? Uh, do I publish the um, spawn version? Do I edit the spawn version? Let's just have a look at the post. Did I, oh, I did skincare, didn't I? Hang on. Yeah, there we go. So you choose which of the two you want. And bear in mind, you can actually look at the articles here just by clicking on the... the um, the title and it will open a page to show you the article so that if you wanted to have a look at it and see do I like it then you can have a look at it first um, if you want to edit the article before you publish it you can do that from this pencil icon so you can actually change the original article before publishing so you've got tremendous freedom to do what you like here whether it's publishing as it is modifying before publishing or spinning and publishing or spinning and modifying and publishing so you've got a ton of options i would recommend yeah. to anybody because there's just so many options start with a simple do one or two articles publish them have a look at them on your blog see how it works it will then become concrete you'll understand exactly what goes on and then you can start thinking about the fancy stuff and so on um josh any more yeah yeah uh several more i'm gonna Kind of, kind of go through these quickly. Uh, yeah. What is the Mandy says? What is the plugin for? So there's a configuration or a posting. I think it's on the posting page option, or what? What do we call that? Strategy posting strategy, something blog. like that. Yeah. On the blog. So I'll explain that. Um, so okay. with most blogs, with most blogs, if you use what we call the default strategy, you just have to have put a, your blog details and then. Real quick, it will work. Yeah. Sorry. I, go I just want to say we don't have a whole lot of time, so hopefully we can run through these fairly quickly. Just to oh, gosh, okay, what time is it? Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. Okay, so um, if your hosting has a lot of special security that, you know, more than they need, it can sometimes block us from talking to your blog, and we give you a plugin that you can install on your blog in 15 seconds, um, and there's a video showing you how, that allows us to talk to your blog to get the posting to work. So if you try the default setting the normal way, and it doesn't work, it doesn't post, delete the blog, add it again, but choose the plug-in version uh, it, it's the little drop down box you'll see it in the video um, and, and then you can you can you can post to your blog so you get a couple of ways to get around bad hosting and most people aren't going to need that but some people do so we, we offer it uh, Glenn says which niche will this work in any niche that Wikipedia has mm -hmm. content in real simple if you can search in Wikipedia and find content then this will work uh, Glenn also said can this content be sent to Facebook groups via, uh, via Facebook group automator uh, <clears throat> face group automator to give posts even more traffic and that's it's it's funny you ask that <laughs> that's the offer that we're we're making uh, after the sale the one-time offer uh, if you well let, me, let that, me tell them about that right now Josh because I know people have been telling me off for not telling them again so okay you've seen it it's super simple how much okay the regular price is hundred and twenty seven dollars that's an annual subscription that's a great price for what you can do if you look at the cost of posting per article it, it's not even a cent right you can you can post tons of articles but until the end of the promo which is midnight Friday the 13th EST so not your local time zone it's midnight EST that's New York for anybody who's not sure we're letting you have this for $97 annually but that price is going to end midnight EST Friday December the 13th it will go back to 127 right now you pay $97 annually so don't forget, it finishes midnight, Friday, December 13th. We've been asked, are there any upsells? And yes, we're offering you a special deal on Face Group Automator after you purchase the main product of Wiki, WikiCloner. Now, let me just tell you about this, because if you find free content 
and you publish it to your blog and you know it's good content because it's come from wiki and then you push it to facebook what happens josh when we when we push um content to facebook groups what's the kind of thing that happens with face group automator well the first thing is it will make it easier for you to push that content to multiple groups the second is that you will get traffic from those groups. Now you've you've been using Face Group Automator, Josh, um, for um, a personal project that you have. And how quickly did you start seeing traffic after you pushed to Facebook? Immediately, uh, I started getting traffic right as soon as the posts were approved in the groups. And I'm still it's been running ever since. I haven't shut it off. I'm, and that that number is much higher. I haven't checked it for a few days, but it keeps going up. Yeah. Now, the other thing you get, you see, a link on Facebook is a link on Facebook. And so that's that's going to count as well for your linking strategy. So you might get traffic from Facebook, but you're also getting a link back to your site. And, you can, you know, you can see that overall all these things start to come together. So we would recommend if you haven't already got Facebook Automator, which we know many of you do because uh, we promoted this a few weeks ago. If you don't have it, it is a really good companion to the wiki cloner tool because it allows you to push the content that you've just created uh, curated onto your blog into a public group where people will see it and then go and look at your blog for more information um, we're not going to show you facebook uh, face group automator now because it would take too long and we've got about five minutes left so to get a hold of this tool you go to wikicloner.com i'm showing you the uh, url on screen right now but I've got to emphasize that this promo deal for launch is going to end Friday, December the 13th, midnight EST. So whatever your time zone may be, the midnight is counted on the EST time zone, Eastern Standard Time or New York time, if you're not sure what that is. So you go to wikicloner.com. If you're watching this replay on the web page itself, just have a look below the video and you'll see the button to get hold of this. If you're not sure, what I would say to you is just get hold of it now, start playing with it, because we do have a full 30-day money-back guarantee. There's no risk to you. Try it, use it, build up some content on your blog. Honestly, if you don't like it, just contact us within 30 days. You can have your money back. But I think you'll love it because it is so simple to use. But you do have to act now because time's running out. You've got a limit before the launch discount disappears. And that launch discount will disappear Friday, December the 13th at midnight Eastern Standard Time. So you're going to go to wikicloner.com where you'll get hold of that special price until midnight Friday, December the 13th. Yeah, so I just wanted to give give people an understanding of the response that we're getting. So this is going to take a couple minutes, um, I'm gonna, but I want to get these out of here. Uh, Michael yeah. says, absolutely amazing tool with outstanding features. Frankie says, OMG, my mind is blowing up thinking yeah. of all the possibilities. Mandy says, wow, I, yeah. uh, I've just scheduled and amended 10 articles to one of my blogs. This is just too easy. James just bought it. This is a no-brainer, big caps. I have most, if not all, uh, prosperative products. In my opinion, this is the best with ease of use and most important, uh, will create natural traffic. This lends itself to AdSense, domain, site flipping, etc. Great product. Mandy says, OMG, no brainer. Mark says, awesome. <laughs> Michael says, awesome. Give it to me now. Imagine yeah. Arnie's voice. <laughs> Mark says, wow, that is incredible. Just for one page. Mandy says, cool, I'm in. Uh, she goes on to say, and any language. Good job, guys. Candace says, it's genius. Craig, yeah. this is amazing, Amen. Uh, Leslie yeah. says, fantastic. Martin says, wow. And there's more and more and more. Those just what I could copy over the past couple of minutes. So absolutely really so simple. To use. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we love it. It's incredibly simple to use, but the, the things we've shown you so far, well, two points, let me make those two points very quickly. Number one, you can do this manually. If you have the time and you're willing to sit at your computer all day. Number two, we haven't shown you all the possibilities. We've just shown you the most basic of the possibilities, which is posting and scheduling a few, you know, half a dozen or 20 or whatever. There are so many other possibilities with this information. Um, we haven't talked about interlinking one article to another at the moment. There's, a, there's a, a million things you can do with it, but we don't want to make it complex for people. 
what you're seeing here is just the tip of the iceberg but please get hold of it while this uh, launch promo discount is on and start using it just in a simple way post one or two have a look at what happens on your blog maybe make a couple of comments on the post um, then post some more and then start thinking about how you might want to use it in your own particular niche because everybody's niche is slightly different and remember you can go broad with the niche and you can go very um, specific with sub niches because you can uh, hop around from one keyword to another and that means whether you want to be really really precise or you want to be sort of general you have that option Josh's blog was about Germany the title tells it everything everything about Germany so he's talking about lots of things the location the food uh, the weather traveling there the money and so on the language um, Germany is a big niche right but he's getting massive numbers of visitors there onto one page that page if he wanted to he could then build out to invite people to view more of his other pages let me give you a quick example if he put a video at the bottom of the page saying thanks for taking the time to read this article everyone I know it's been great information for you we also have a ton of other great articles why not click on this link and have a read about you know the current um, currency that you'll need if you're traveling there and um, you know click here to get an exchange rate conversion you could even embed an ex a currency exchange rate converter so he could actually add a little bit more into that because he's already getting people there he's checking statistics he can spend time on that one page because it's now worth it because he's got so many visitors if you have pages where you get two or three visitors are you going to spend two or three hours to make it even better no because two or three visitors not worth it if you're getting 35,000 visitors is it worth spending two hours making that even better and giving them something more to get their teeth into you bet your life it is because you know the visitors are coming to that page because it's interesting them and it's already ranking in the engines so it then becomes something where not only have you got the great content you can then build on that because once you see those visitors you know you've got an audience that's worth talking to right I mean that's so obvious but people overlook it very often because when you're starting to get traffic to a particular page start making the most of that traffic make sense very simple okay so you've got to act now honestly time is running out so if you if you don't take advantage while we're running this launch discount you will miss out you will be paying more Friday December the 13th at midnight Eastern Standard Time that's when the price goes up so please take advantage before then wikicloner.com if you're on the replay page the payment button will be just below this video anything else we need to do Josh I think we've just gone nope, slightly over which is not bad all. for just, us just, yeah just grab this this is an awesome opportunity uh, to instantly post and uh, drip feed unique content to your to your sites uh, highly expert content and then yeah. if you add in face group automator on top of that to promote that content you have just an awesome uh, awesome uh, couple products to get you a lot of content and a lot of traffic it's brilliant okay thanks very much everyone and we'll see you on the next one bye now